All right, this is the 2014 AMC 10B problem number 25. This problem is done by request from a commenter. I don't get to every request, but I try to get to them over time if I know how to do the problem. So here we go. In a small pond, there are 11 lily pads in a row labeled 0 through 10. A frog is sitting on pad 1. When the frog is on pad N, with n being between 0 and 10, note that 0 and 10 aren't part of n. And there's a reason for that we'll have to get to in a moment. It will jump to pad n minus 1 with probability n over 10. Let's pause there because there's a lot of n's going on and stuff. What, what are they saying? Well, if you're on pad 1, you can go to two places. You can go to pad 0 or you can go to pad 2. Okay, n minus 1, n is the 1 right here, so 1 minus 1 would be 0. So the chance that he goes to pad 0 is n, which is 1, over 10. And the chance he goes to pad 2, pad n plus 1, when n is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, with probability 1 minus this probability. So 1 minus 1 tenth is 9 tenths. Okay, so we got that down. Each jump, we just want to kind of get an idea of what's happening. Each jump is independent of the previous jump. So he doesn't have any different probabilities each time he encounters jumping from the same lily pad. It's always the same way the probability works. Okay, if the frog reaches pad zero, it will be eaten by a patiently waiting snake. If the frog reaches pad 10, it will exit the pond never to return. What is the probability the frog will escape without being eaten by the snake? Uh, so kind of a, a fun problem. Usually they don't have things like that, you know, like some dire consequence of the frog not escaping. Uh, or maybe it's a good consequence for the snake. Okay, so uh, we need to think about this. Um, uh, you can say that the chance that he's going to survive, right? Because he starts on pad one. The chance that he survives from pad one is just 9 tenths times the probability that he survives from pad 2. Why that? Because if he goes to pad 0, which is a 1 in 10 chance, he's not going to survive. Or she, whatever it is, we don't really know. Um, it just says the frog, right? Yeah, we don't, we don't know what the gender of the frog. Okay, so um, 9 tenths is the chance he goes to pad 2 times the probability that he survives from pad 2. So let's see if we can come up with some kind of a formula. So the problem is once you get to pad 2, from pad 2 it's going to be, you can go back to pad 1 or you can go forward to pad 3. And if you go forward to pad 3, uh, that's going to be an 8 in 10 chance and pad 1 is going to be a 2 in 10 chance, right? So he could go from pad 1 to pad 2, back to pad 1, back to pad 2, back to pad 1, 2, 3, and so on. There's all kinds of infinite ways that it could work. So maybe we'll use infinite geosequence, but he could go from 1 to 2 to 3, back to 2, back to 1, to 2, back to 1. You know, it, all kinds of combinations, so probably infinite geo is not going to work. So we're going to have to create a different tool to be able to evaluate this. As you noticed, I made this probability of 2 because we're trying to simplify no notation. Rather than write the probability of pad 2, that's a lot of letters and numbers and stuff, we want to simplify it as much as possible so we're writing as little as possible during the test. If you're answering this question under test conditions, you're probably going for a perfect score or and or trying to qualify for the US uh, J AJMO or the US AMO. And so you got to probably have not too much time left at this point in the test, and you got to be working efficiently, and the notation that you create is going to impact things like that. So we have 9 tenths times probability of 2. What about the probability of 1? Well, how can we represent that? Or how about the probability from pad n that he survives? Well, the probability that he is going to survive from pad n is going to be equal to uh, n over 10 times the probability that he survives from n minus 1 plus 
uh, 1 minus, I'm going to have a space here, 1 minus n over 10 times the probability he survives from n plus 1. Right? And so this is what they told us in the, the problem. You can kind of create this formula. If you don't create this tool, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to figure out what's going on. Because this is kind of a states problem where you're, there's different like board states, if you will, of the game of life and death for this frog. And so we kind of need some sort of a formula to express it. Um, also, we should think from pad 5, right, the chance that he goes from pad 5 to pad 4 or pad 6, it's going to be a 5 in 10 chance he goes to pad 4 and also a 5 in 10 chance he goes to pad 6. And from that position, we should be able to picture that there's going to be symmetry. Once he reaches pad 5, there's a 1 in 2 chance from pad 5 that he's going to get to either you know, out of the pond or be eaten by the snake. They both should be an equal chance because he has an equal chance of going both directions. And then from those directions, they are symmetric. So the chance of him surviving from 4 is the chance of him dying from 6 and so on. Okay. Uh, so what can we do with this? Um, if we could get pad one, which is what we're looking for, we're looking for P of one, the chance that he survives from pad one. In order to get that, it would be nice if we could express this in terms of pad five, because we know pad five is two. So this gives us kind of our plan. If you want, you can pause the video here and see if after creating these tools and understanding the objective of finding the probability of pad one, if you're able to solve the problem from here. Feel free to pause it and restart it when you wanna see how the problem goes. Okay, so uh, using this formula then, let's express the probability of surviving from pad one. It's going to equal uh, one tenth times the probability of surviving from pad zero plus nine-tenths times the probability of surviving from pad two. Now, the chance he survives from pad zero is, well, zero. There's no chance. So this would be equal to, pad one is equal to nine-tenths pad two. This confirms what we talked about earlier with our observations, right? Okay, so now what can we do next? Well, it's kind of like a sequence. You just Go to the next pad and let's do probability that he survives from pad two now. And that's going to be equal to uh, a two in 10 chance, or we could say one fifth, a one fifth chance that he survives from pad one, plus a four out of five chance that he survives from, times the probability that he survives from pad three. So one, one fifth chance times the probability he survives from pad one, plus four-fifths times the probability he survives from pad three. Now you might, when you wrote this, you might not have known what was going to happen next, but you should have a really good idea right now. Because see, we've got pad one in terms of pad two, then I could manipulate this to say that pad two's prob the probability of surviving from pad two is equal to 10 over nine times the probability he survives from pad one. Now why would I want to do that? Because I have a pad one here. And if I change this to a pad one, they can combine and I can set up for pad three in terms of pad one. And in this manner, we will march all the way to pad five and finish solving the problem. So uh, you kind of want to work quickly now. So it's going to be uh, 10 ninths minus one fifth times the probability that he survives from pad one, moving this over and plugging this here in my mind. Um, plus, or equals rather, four-fifths times the probability that he survives from pad three. Simplify this, um, multiply by five over five, we're going to get uh, 50 over 45 minus nine over 45. That's going to give 41 over 45. So we will have, do I have board space? I do. Okay, so 41 over 45 times the probability that he survives from pad one, we're gonna multiply by 5 fourths, and this is equal to the probability that he survives from pad three. Five cancels to get nine, and we have the expression that the probability that he survives from pad three 
is 41 over 36 times the probability that he survives from pad one. Okay, um, we've got that. We can march to the next one now. We just did pad two's expression using our formula. We're now going to move to pad three. So the chance that he survives from pad three, the, prob the probability of that happening is equal to a three in 10 chance he goes back to pad two, so times the probability he survives from pad two, plus a seven in 10 chance times the probability that he survives from pad four. Okay, but we have pad two and pad three, both in terms of pad one, we can replace them and get pad four, the probability of surviving from four in terms of the probability of surviving from one. So uh, this is going to be 41 over 36 times the probability of surviving from pad one. Um, and this is equal to 3 tenths times uh, 10 ninths the probability he survives from pad 1. Again, replacing the pad 2 with this expression here, and we use that also. Okay, so then uh, this, 10, this 3 cancels here to give 3, the 10 cancels here, so you get 1 third plus 7 tenths the probability he survives from pad 4. We're going to go ahead and subtract one third, mentally uh, manipulate it to become 12 over 36. So it's 41 minus 12 over 36 times the probability he survives from pad one. Again, you're not multiplying by three to get rid of it because you don't want to, you're just combining. Um, so we're subtracting this to the side. This is going to equal 7 tenths times the probability he survives from pad 4. That's 29 over 36 uh, times the probability he survives from pad 1. We're going to multiply by 10 over 7. And this is going to equal the probability that he survives from pad 4. This cancels to give us a 5, and this gives us an 18. 5 times 29 is 145. 7 times 18 is 70, and 56, it's 126 um, times probability he survives from 1. This is equal to the probability that he survives from pad 4. We got a uh, little more to do still. So uh, chance he survives from pad 4 now. Again, why pad 4? Because we just finished pad 3. We did the pad 1, we did the pad 2, now we did pad 3, now we're doing pad 4. So the chance that he survives from pad four is a four in 10, which is two fifths times the chance he survives from pad three. Again, because he falls back to n minus one with a four in 10 chance. Uh, plus three fifths times the probability that he survives from pad five. We're really close now. This is what we wanted. We need to get these two in terms of pad one and we're golden. So we get 145 over 126 times the probability that he survives from pad one equals two fifths times pad threes is over there. It's 41 over 36 um, times probability that he survives from pad one plus this expression. Okay, we're gonna move, we're gonna cancel this first to get 18. Um, those are prunts prime, so 41 over 90. Uh, we're going to subtract that. So you get 145 over 126 minus 41 over 90 times the probability he survives from pad 1. Moving this down here, I didn't write it here just to save time, equals 3 fifths times the probability he survives from pad 5. There's no way around this. We need a least common multiple. I'm going to do that work on the side over here because we're running out of board space. So uh, 126 is... Uh, seven times, or it's two times 63. So it's two times nine times seven. And 90 is five times 18, which is two times three squared times five. Oh, you can just see if we they have the same numbers here, we can just multiply this one by five over five and this one by seven over seven. Um, so let's do that now. Five times 145 is 725 over five times 126 uh, is going to be 630. Minus seven over here is 287 over 630. 
And uh, to subtract that, we'll add 13 to get 300. That's 425 away. Add 425 and 13 to get 438 over 630 times the probability he survives from one. And this equals three fifths times the probability he survives from five. Now we already said by symmetry, the probability that he survives from pad five is one half. So I'm just gonna plug that in now to get three tenths. This is three tenths. And we're looking for that. That's what we want. The probability that he survives from pad one is the answer. Notice this could have simplified. Don't simplify things until you have to. Uh, because there's sometimes a chance for a shortcut. So multiply by the reciprocal of this, and you will get 630 over 438. Now, if we had simplified, I wouldn't have this easy cancellation here. So 10 knocks off that zero. Um, four plus three is seven and eight, it's 15. So three is going to go into that because it's a multiple of three. Uh, 420 would be 140. So in other words, three times 140 equals 420. And then from there, it's 18 more, which is six multiples of three. So we're gonna have 146 left after we cancel out and you get 63 over 146. Now 146, uh, it does not have a three in it because six plus four plus one uh, is 11 and it doesn't have a seven in it either. So this must be the answer. Sure enough, there it is, part C. It's a little, uh, answer C, it's a little bashy, a lot of work to do in calculations, but uh, that's how you have to go about it, basically. All right, you guys have a good one. If you uh, like this video, give it a, a like down below and leave a comment if you have any questions, I'll be happy to explain.